Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here today. Uh, my name is Furuya. Today, I'd like to show you uh, what Kamishibai is. This Kamishibai uh, was introduced about 100 years ago, originating uh, in Japan, mainly for children. But nowadays, children lost their interest in this uh, Kamishibai and uh, now we have uh, probably new need from the elderly and uh, I'm playing this uh, performance at uh, nursing homes these days. Today, however, I'm playing at uh, international students, still very young people. Okay, uh, this is a story about uh, Hisako Nakamura. Hisako. These are Japanese to uh, dolls made by her. By the end of this kamishibai, you will know why we call her Japan's Helen Keller. Okay, let's start. Hisako was born in 1908 in Gif Prefecture. Without arms and legs, she led a terrible life. In Japan, about 30,000 people killed themselves. I'm certain some of them may not kill themselves if they knew how she lived. When she was two years old, gangrene developed in her arms and legs. And they either fell off or had to be cut off. Gangrene is a name of disease that decomposes your body, body tissue, resulting from infec infection. This was a common Japanese lifestyle some hundred years ago. Her mother raised Hisako strictly to prepare her life, to prepare her to live life independently. She taught Hisako to dress herself, to cook, to clean her house, to take a bath, and to go to the toilet. She treated Hisako like a non-handicapped person. So severe was her mother, Hisako once said that she doubted if this mother women was her own mother or not. Hisako also had to earn her own living. To make this possible, her mother trained Hisako to sew and knit. However, her mother only provided her with a needle, thread, and piece of fabric. She left Hisako unattended so that she could learn how to thread the needle by herself in her own way. Even we non-handicapped people have a hard time to thread a sewing needle, then how could she thread a sewing needle and how could she tie the thread without any help from her mother? Hisako thought over and over how to do these sewing jobs. She looked like a bird pecking at feet as she tried to hold the scissors between her teeth. Look. This is a miniature uh, Japanese traditional scissors. Holding like this. She wrapped a towel around the stump of her, of her arm and hold a needle and she moved her mouse holding a thread to the needle, like this. Then how could she tie the thread? 
She worked out her own way to tie the thread in her mouth using her tongue. Like any young girl, Sako wanted to play with her friends, but she was kept most of the time within her house. So she spent every day practicing her sewing at home. One day she finally saw the Japanese doll. And gave it to uh, one of her few friends. But to her surprise, Hisako saw the mother of her friend dumping it in the river. The mother of her friend didn't let her daughter to keep it because the doll was wet. The doll got wet because Hisako had to use her tongue to tie the thread. Hisako was infuriated. The doll got the doll she took so much time and effort to make was thrown into a river just because it was wet with her spit. She used this humiliation she felt from this experience to turn her soul on fire. Since that day of humiliation, she practiced her sewing day and night relentlessly. One day after much struggle, she finally learned to tie a thread in her mouth without wetting the thread. She said it just happened miraculously while she was deeply engaged in practice. From this experience, she later said she learned that humiliation had become her valuable treasure of her life. When she was 20, she was sold to a tent side show business. This is a hand cart, traditional popular transportation equipment. The owner thought Isako could make money for his business by showing how uh, women without arms and legs could sew, knit, and write calligraphy. She did this for about 20 years and had never spent even one day without feeling humiliation. One day she was invited to perform her sewing and calligraphy at uh, elementary school. Since then she gave speeches of her experience at many places. She continued to do this until her death at 72 in order to give hope for a better life, regardless of whether one was handicapped or not. On April 17th of 1937, Hisako was invited to greet Helen Keller visiting Japan at the auditorium in Tokyo. On the stage, she presented a doll she made to Helen Keller. Grasping her hands, Helen Keller said to the audience that Hisako lived a tougher life but accomplished more things than she did. Hisako lived a life full of struggle that non-handicapped people could barely imagine. Once in her early days, she cursed her misfortune of losing her arms and legs, but as she got old, she started to appreciate that her misfortune gave her determination to live strong. She discovered that she did not live 
for herself, but for a life given by God and Buddha. She realized that one should live by soul, not, but not by body. At 65, she was awarded a prize for helping people from the Ministry of Health and Welfare. She even left the will offering her body for medical research. She had never asked for someone's help, nor received public welfare. She treated a thorny path like a worm. There were no wheelchairs these days. By the way, she had two daughters. I would like to end this Kamishibai by quoting her statement. Non-handicapped people tend to complain what they don't have, but I, without a perfect body, was always thankful for what I had. Thank you.